we were talking earlier, especially you, Cole, because you, mm. you watch Emmerdale yeah. when you're down mm. here in your, in your hotel room and, and what have you. Emmerdale is one of these soaps that manages to tackle things that many of the other soaps kind of leave behind. And anorexia in pregnancy is something that none of us had necessarily put the two together. Mm. How did you do research for, for that? Oh, my goodness. So when I was told, this many years ago now, mm. um, I think back in 2014, I'd never heard... Mm. I didn't know much about anorexia, really, mm. anyway, but I'd definitely not heard of pregorexia, which is what um, Priya sort of developed again. Yeah. Um, so I literally... I spoke to a leading um, consultant doctor in Leeds. I was on the phone to him all the time. I read books. Mm. I followed girls on, like, their blogs. I just wanted to really I understand, understand what yeah. was going on in their head. Mm. Um, for me, I was coming from a very different place. I have quite a very healthy relationship with food mm. growing up. And realising as well that anorexia is a mental mm. illness and it's serious and mm. it is so sad. And I have so much compassion for it now. Um, you know, obviously playing the storyline quite a few years ago and then Priya relapsed again, I think it was a couple of years later, and now again it's come up again. Yeah. And it's mm. something so so pregorexia, sorry to interrupt you, yeah. just for anyone wondering what exactly what yeah. it is, is... So it's somebody who is already anorexic, who Possibly. gets... Yeah, yes. I've got a definition so, here. Yeah, it, ah, says, okay. it says here that it's a, it's a term coined by the media that refers to a woman's drive to control her pregnancy weight gain through extreme diet and exercise. So she's pregnant, but she's controlling yes. her weight through exercise and diet. That's right. So some women find that they already have an eating disorder mm. and they maybe have it under control and then they fall pregnant mm. and it brings up those urges again mm. to want to control the pregnancy. Your body's changing, mm. you're mm. not in control of anything and it's that urge again. Or um, you can develop it. Yeah. through getting pregnant and genuinely, like, with all the pressures like that women have. Like a body dysmorphia, yeah. as you see. I'm thinking yeah. my, something's happened to my body or I don't want to put on weight. I don't like how and I look. Yeah, and mm. it's something as well that I know a lot of people would be like, oh, but you've, you're carrying a child and you're still not eating. But it's mm. just something that... You know, it's mental illness. It's yeah, they can't it's, help. It's, yeah, they really. just cannot help. Mm. It's very difficult. We talk a lot on... You just said there about your healthy relationship with food and we talk a lot on the, mm. on the show yeah. about, you know, our eating habits and whatever. And... Um, when Nadia's on, she always says to me, I'm so envious of, of me because I have such a healthy relationship. So I don't eat for emotional reasons, no. if that makes yeah. sense. I eat because I'm hungry. Yeah. And right. you say you have a, a healthy relationship yeah. with food. Is you know, that just because you've grown up around...? Definitely. I mean, I'm from a Filipino family, so food is very much what... It's social. It's mm. what we do. We eat all the time. My mum's constantly cooking. <laughs> so, um, for me, from being a child, you know, I saw my mum eat everything. You know, they never sort of held any kind of food. I ate what they ate. Sure. So, um, yeah, it was very difficult for me so in terms of getting my head into a different yeah. space. Mm. But now I understand it more. I see how, how it's not that hard, you know, and also these things can derive from anxiety and OCD and perfectionism. Yeah. And in Priya's you know, case, which... it seems to be stress. Uh, if stress. there's any kind Sorry, of... Yes. Her sort of trigger, as it were, seems to be a, a stressful environment or situation that she finds herself in. Yes. Where, where, where is it now? Because at the moment, you, we see the, the little clip that we're showing here, it's almost manifesting through seeing her child eating something that she feels is, is inappropriate. Mm. Yes, um, there is that. Uh, but also, I think she's always been quite worried about putting her eating habits onto her daughter. Yeah. Um, but I think it's more to do as well with the fact that, you know, I don't know whether everyone watched The Big Night Out, you mm. know, and the storyline with Jacob and Maya and, you know, Pri was part of that and thought that somebody possibly could have died as a result yeah. of her. And it just brought up all the stress. And also, she doesn't have many people to talk to. She's quite yeah. a sort of an, a lonely character in that way. She's, she lost her best friend last year because, you know, Pri had an affair mm -hmm. with her fiancé and all this, this. So she's on her own. She doesn't have a partner. She's a single working mother. Yeah. And I think everything's just bottling up. So what's next for, for her? What's, what, what would you like to happen for her? Well, you see, obviously, being an actress in a soap, the more drama, the better. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously. But, you know, I do love playing her. But, um, yeah, we'll see. Obviously, this storyline will go on for a little while and we'll see what mm. happens. But um, And what response have you had from mm, the public to the storyline? It's been, you know, going... Obviously, this hasn't quite come on screen properly yet. So, um, you know, nobody's obviously said much at the moment, but from when I did it a few years ago, um, it was wonderful. I got some lovely letters from girls mm. that said watching the show had 
help them eat again mm. and get better. Mm. So that was right. wonderful. That's why it's so the... good that Emma Dale especially yes. tackles all They're really good. And the fact that. is, is that when you've come back, they don't then go, oh, we've done that storyline, yeah. we don't need to go back there. Because with something like anorexia, it will always kind yeah. of be it there. Does. So it's it good relaxes. that it flares up now Exactly, and, again, and it's real. Going and I think even going, when, even when my character is just doing other storylines, it's always in the back of yeah. my head and in the writer's mind mm. that that's something she has, so yeah. you have to be aware of yeah. that. Yeah. And I think that's, uh, that in itself is very healthy because it's not one of these conditions that you have it, you get fixed, and therefore you live happily ever after mm. and it's all sort of done. It's an ongoing It's something it's ongoing you, thing. I think, like with any mental illness or anything, anxiety, you know, anything you have, mm. you have to keep any any sort of addiction or anything, you have to keep working on these yeah, things. So yeah. um, it's, a, it's a process, it's an ongoing but process. But in terms of your own personal life, you found much joy oh, in Amadeo yes. because you've met your partner. Yes, there, I have. You? Tell us yes. more about that. <laughs> well, so Simon did come in to do a few episodes, but we didn't actually meet quite like we didn't really work together okay. and we all went for dinner director David Kester my best friend Dana and Simon and we kind of that's where we really got talking but then nothing happened for ages and ages and I think he sort of became best friends with my friend <laughs> <laughs> and then we started talking on the phone and we didn't go on our first date for like a month afterwards oh, oh yeah. it's so oh, romantic yes. <laughs> you've I'm got totally lovely late. friends mine are rubbish <laughs> <laughs> Though. Did you feel a spark? Do you know, he came on set and I think all the girls were like, oh, who's this guy? He's very handsome, he's lovely. And we did have one scene where we did sit and we had some time out and we talked. Yeah. And I thought he was lovely. I mean, you would always think he was lovely, you mean, because he is lovely. He's amazing. But I, you know... I, I, you know, as any girl has, they've come out of something else and you just want to take your time yeah. and get to know someone. So I wasn't thinking about it. I yeah. really wasn't thinking about anything. And then uh, as time went on, we talked on the phone and we just literally all the time on the phone and then we went for our first date, oh, which was amazing. And it just and sort of grew, grew away. organically, yeah. which is actually it the has... best. And if you watch Love Island, you'll know that is the best way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the best way. Fiona, Brilliant. we've run out of time, I'm, I'm afraid, but thank you so thank much you for so coming much. on today. Fiona Wade, thank everyone. You. Thank you. <laughs>